<laughs> well, I'm a Cub Master, retired, and uh, now I'm Assistant Scout Master. So I started as a Cub Master. Uh, the, Cub, the, the Scout Master came to me and said, said, Jacob, I need you to be Cub Master because the, the, the pack's going to die if you don't take it over, and if it dies, my troop dies. So, well, what do I got to work with? And he goes, you got four boys and 54 cents in the bank. And I said, great, I get to start from scratch. So I said, well, how do I make my money? And he goes, we sell popcorn. And I said, great, how do we do this? And, uh, and that was my introduction to popcorn. And the time that we went, the year before I took over, they did $300 in sales. And this last year, we did $41,000. So we did $41,000 the year before and $41,000 this year. This last year, 2015, we had seven boys sell. Six of them, it was their first time ever selling popcorn. One did 32,000, one did 28, two did 25, and two did 14,000. We sell because we need all this glorious camping gear. I have parents that live paycheck to paycheck, and they can't afford $350 for camp, they can't afford a $100 sleeping bag or, or, or a hiking pack or even hiking boots. So, uh, so we needed money, and I said, well, this is the way we can do it, and we get 40% commission. So if you go out and you sell $100 in popcorn, you just got $40. So, aspects of fundraising. I'm gonna go over what's called the product versus the medium. And this is where a lot of people get confused when they're out there selling the popcorn, is what are they actually selling? We're gonna go over the anatomy of a sale. This is what should make up your sale. And then we're gonna go over what are you selling, the speech, and where to sell, because that's really important. So what was before the iPod? Walkman, Sony Walkman, and then it went to the Discman, okay? And people wanted to be able to carry more music. So instead of Steve Jobs creating a brand new product and, and creating a need for it, he addressed a need that was already there, okay? And then he created a product to fulfill that need. So one of the things that we, my son and Luke and I, kind of discovered is that there is a need in the community that the community wants to support something. So that is the need that we tapped into with our sales technique. So what you need to do is convince them through your speech that you're, they're supporting your community service. What are they supporting? They're supporting scouting. You address your unit needs through the fundraising and you address the customer's needs through the, the fundraising. So what gets them to go from here all the way up? And one of the things that that is, is mastery of the skill. So the goal is to get our scouts up here to the high plateau where they've mastered this skill of selling. Kids grow from success. When you give the kids, the scouts, the best tool possible, they can do great things with it. If we give them bad tools, they don't do a very nice job with what they're doing. You give them the best tools, they're gonna do awesome. So this is where you're gonna give them the best tools, is giving them good training. When selling popcorn, the boys go, hey, I'm selling popcorn. Hey, I'm buy my popcorn. That's a hard sell. Saying, hey, buy my popcorn and waiting for somebody to be hungry enough that they want to buy your overpriced popcorn <laughs> is like waiting for the rain to fall, filling that river, waiting for that river to empty into the lake and then scooping out of the lake. We want to catch it when the rain's coming down. We want to collect that fresh rainwater when it's right there. One out of 10 people buy when you go, I'm selling popcorn, hey, buy my popcorn. Under the soft sell method, we get seven of 10 people to the table, and then we get six of those seven people to buy. So we have a 60% close ratio. So what's our product? Our product is scouting, okay? And everything that scouting encompasses. Our medium is popcorn. It could be anything. It could be chocolate candy bars. It could be trail mix. It could be Christmas reefs. It could be beef jerky. It doesn't matter what it is, this process works the same. You need to sell your scouting program. And the only way your scout can sell the program is if he knows the program. One of the things that's been shown in studies that Trails N and some other fundraisers have done for scouting is that boys that participate in the fundraising programs stay in scouting because they're invested, they earned it. Every time our boys went on an activity somewhere, they, at the end of the activity, I said, why'd we get to do this? And they go, because we sold popcorn. That's one of the things you need to remember is that this isn't yours, this is theirs. 
and help them accept ownership of this. And then they're going to be more invested in it and they're going to stick with it. What's the least profitable way to go and help your scout earn his money? Mom and dad at work. You taking the order form to work. Boy doesn't learn anything, doesn't help him do anything. Selling scouting. What part of scouting are we selling? The scouting experience. Camping, bow and arrow, BB gun, fishing, hiking, conservation. So Luke earned $9,200 in commission and $1,700 in Walmart gift cards, which is a lot of money to spend at Walmart. <laughs> he has to identify who he wants to give money to. He doesn't get to keep all of that money. He needs to decide who he's going to help with that. So he supports, he has three special needs scouts that can't go sell popcorn. So he pays for everything that they do for the full year. He also, we also have Troop 2 at the California School for the Blind. And he gave them $1,000 for them to go do all the stuff that they want to go do that year too. And then he gave $500 to an orphanage in China that pays for all the kids in the orphanage to go to private schools. Anatomy of sale, initial contact, what should the boy be doing? Eye contact to the adult, hand out for a handshake if they're going in for a business, okay? Even if somebody's coming out of store, if their hands aren't full, teach them to shake their hand. You know, it's part of business, it's part of the greeting. Hi, my name is, that's your opening. Uh, then he goes on, he goes, I'm trying to raise $40,000 this year. So I'm raising this amount so that I can go to National Scout Jamboree this summer in 2017. He'll go on, he goes, well, I also take care of Troop 2 at School for the Blind to make sure the blind scouts that can't go sell popcorn can have a lot of fun going camping. And on top of that, I'm helping out some orphanages. And then on top of that, I'm also earning money for my college. Now he's going to present the medium. Scout should have three goals, at least three. A short term, a long term, and a philanthropy goal. Okay? Something community related. Either Can I count on your support? <laughs> Who's going to say no to somebody asking for help? So, That's how we get seven to ten people to the table. Words. You're not allowed to say buying or buy, selling, or would you like to? I have all this delicious popcorn. So a psychological method is create desire. How do we create desire? You use descriptive words. Delicious. By the way, this one right here is my most favorite. He likes the chocolate caramel crunch, most expensive one. So he doesn't tell any prices at this point. He just goes, this is my, the one I like the most. It tastes like Rolos on popcorn. Another desire method here that he's using. Create desire for the product. 75% of the time, people will buy whatever you recommend. Okay? So he goes, but if you don't like really sweet, we have our savory. And I really like the white cheddar. Okay, so now he's kind of downsold. He went from $25 to $15. goes, but if you don't want a lot, we have our smaller bag of caramel corn. And then, of course, your closing, which is, so Luke, when he gets all the way to the end, the people have chosen which bags of popcorn they got, and they got like five bags of popcorn in their arms. And I'm thinking in my head, do they know that's $160 worth of popcorn? Okay, and he goes, all right, I want to warn you. It's a little bit pricey. But I want you to know that 73% of this goes directly to scouting. 33% goes to help the council provide scholarships to the boys to go to camp. The other 40% goes to me. And out of that 40%, I do all this wonderful stuff with it. And to also let you know, 6%, not even part of that 73, goes into my college fund. He goes, so that'll be $120, please. So teaching the speech, the name. Make sure that, you know, they got to say their name. Say it loud, say it proud, right? Eye contact, hi, my name is. As soon as I get all my popcorn, I'm ripping open bags of popcorn. Try this, try this, try this, try this. All right, what'd you guys think? Did it taste good? Too sweet? Too sour? What? Too spicy? You know, I'm letting them try everything. Because how can they sell something that they've never tried? Close the deal. That's where you say the 73% and you give the breakdown of where all the money goes. And then uh, swiping the credit cards. So have them practice asking yes questions. Uh, and of course, you got the subtle ones, which are the goals. The maybes. So you get somebody that goes, well, maybe. The maybe is your objections. That cost too much. So if somebody doesn't like popcorn, you say, we have our military donation program. And they can, one, either buy, do the donation, and you don't even have to tender product. Or, like we do, They'll buy a bag from us and we'll give it to the local Coast Guard or the Army base or, or the uh, Air Force base. We had Fleet Week in San Francisco. 
we set up a booth and we put up a big sign that says, buy a bag, give it to a sailor. We did $2,000 over about eight hours. We kept a scoreboard. People would come by, give us 10, 5, 20, $100, and we would mark a checkpoint down on a scoreboard. And then as sailors came by in uniform or Marines came by in uniform, we gave them a free bag of popcorn. We, all, we always say a maybe is a yes, so do your best. Get them. Positive feedback cycle. You take the kid to the room and go, you know what, mommy, I got a lot of work, I, had, I, got it done. I still got to cook dinner, and your room's a mess. Let's clean up your room. And you start picking up a couple items with them. You say, hey, can you pick up those Legos? They pick up those Legos. You go, you did a great job picking up those Legos. You're doing such a great job. You know, I want to be able to sit down on the couch with you tonight and watch 30 minutes of cartoons with you. What's your favorite cartoon? Oh, I like SpongeBob. Okay, I want to watch that with you, but I still got to cook dinner. Can you finish cleaning the room while I go cook dinner? The kid's feeling positive. He realized you encouraged him. He feels like he can get it done. Now he's on the positive feedback cycle. He, he go, hey, as soon as you get the Legos cleaned up the rest of the way, you come get me and tell me that you did that, and I'll come look. And then you go and you look real quick, you go, oh, you did a great job with that. Now can you pick up all the Hot Wheel cars? You're putting them into the positive feedback cycle. And now they're looking forward to spending quality time with you on the couch, watching some cartoons and getting some love and snuggles. Where do I go? Well, this is our BART transit system that goes all over the bay. And I'll go to any single one of those BART stations. And, uh, and we'll just set up a table and we'll sell out of those. So the transportation hubs are really big for us. We go to downtown street corners where there's going to be a lot of people headed in a certain direction, either to the ferry boat or the subway or to the Giants uh, baseball game. Conflicts, sometimes you got a lot of packs in one particular area or troops in one particular area and you're all fighting over one or two Safeways or what do you got, HEBs. <coughs> uh, and you're all fighting for, for uh, control of a certain area. Look outside, look outside, Jerry. Nothing says you have to stay there. Go down to where everybody's parking at the UT game. I always carried popcorn in the back of my car because my wife would go, hey, I gotta go over here. And I'm like, well, how long are you gonna be shopping? She's like, 30 minutes. I'm like, okay. So I have a little folding table and about four or five boxes of popcorn in the back of the car. Luke's got his extra scout shirt in, his, in the car. As soon as we park, we pull out the table, slap, the th slap some popcorn on the table, and we make $300 while she's in there sell doing her shopping for 30 minutes. So that's one of the easy ways to do it. You just got to think outside the box that you don't have to have everything planned out.